Hello, hello, hello. I hope you all are having an amazing start to your day. Hello, all right, happy New Year's Eve. Hope everyone's having an amazing day. I'm going live on both um, Instagram and Facebook. So I'm just trying to straighten my Instagram screen. And then we'll be ready to dive in. I don't know about you, um, but I have been seeing a lot on my timeline how many people are pumped up, excited, and like ready for this new year, ready for this new year to begin, ready for what's next, ready to leave 2020 in the past, and all those things. And so today I want to talk about five simple strategies that I am using to make next year or this upcoming year in a couple hours epic. Um, the neat thing about it is this is not like some strategy that I like pulled out. Like I, lo I love smart goals, don't get me wrong. Um, but smart goals are very effective when we think of the workplace setting and how your employer can kind of track what you're able to accomplish and you following through with um, maybe a goal or a standard that you're setting for that move that upcoming year. Um, but when it comes to our own personal goals, it goes a lot deeper than that. And the reason that I feel like it goes a lot deeper is because I feel like a lot of times we can miss what it is that we need to accomplish by trying to focus on what we feel like we're supposed to do. And so today I want to share five simple strategies that you can begin implementing and I'm going to give you a little secret okay the thing about this is I am not going to ask you to like join me today and then like check it off your to-do list and be like all right listen to Dr. Nicole is live and it was really awesome but like I got other things to do I'm really going to hold you to following through with it right away okay following through as soon as today okay because a lot of times we could have the greatest ideas in the world we could have the greatest strategies in the world but then when it comes to taking action we delay and when we delay that prevents us from being able to get to where we want to be we get defeated we get overwhelmed we throw in that proverbial towel and then before you know it like you just don't you're not doing it so I am going to hold you to really following through, okay? You do not have to wait for some arbitrary date like New Year's Day. You do not have to wait for Sunday or the start of the week or until all your T's are crossed and all your I's are dotted. This is something you can commit to as soon as today. So the first step that I am going to share with you today as far as how we can make next year the most epic year yet is to become a gentle observer, okay? In the personal development world, this is a term that, that is, is thrown around a lot, but I don't think it's discussed enough, okay? And the way that the gentle observer process works is the reality is we have a lot that we can learn from ourselves, from our mistakes, from our setbacks, from our failures, and from our wins. But a lot of times we get so consumed in the things that we've done wrong. We get so consumed in the things that have gone, you know, not the way that we really want them to go. And then we beat ourselves up. We feel frustrated. We feel defeated. We feel all these different emotions. And so becoming a gentle observer actually allows you to dig deep and say like, okay, what happened in the past year that I didn't really like? Where was I in my own way? What were my setbacks? What were my struggles? And not from a place of like, oh, well, it's me, me, not from a place of like, you're about to beat yourself up with all your negative thoughts and negative beliefs, but from a place of like, how can I use this to serve me? One of my favorite quotes, and I'm going to botch this quote, but you guys will get the premise, is by Thomas Edison. And Thomas Edison says, I did not... I did not fail at making a light bulb. I just found a thousand ways that didn't work because every time he tried, it looked like failure, but failure only happens when you don't try again, when you give up, okay, and you don't keep going. For him, he's like, okay, I had a setback. It didn't work. What did I learn from this? And how can I go into the next time, the new, um, new development of the light bulb more intentionally, more informed, and just making better decisions with it? Thank you so much for the love. Thank you. So... Um, I love that because for most of us, we beat ourselves up. We're like, okay, well, I made a failure, so this must not be my thing, or I must not go the way that I want it to go. But some of the most successful people have had the biggest failures, and they, the fact that they continued is what allowed them to be successful because they became a gentle observer. How can I learn from this, and then how can I build from this? I am a firm, 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 firm believer that our setbacks actually become stepping stones to the success that we want. Thank you, Chanel. I love you. You're so dope. Thank you, girl. Um, thank you. <laughs> so how can we use our stepping stones? And I know Instagram probably like, what am I talking about? It's <laughs> I'm on Facebook and Instagram on two different devices because nobody wants to create a program that lets me stream from, from both at the same time. So that's why you see me looking back and forth and talking back and forth. So 
Um, but yes, our stepping stones become our setbacks become our stepping stones from which we can create the success that we desire, right? But if we are not a gentle observer and we're allowing setbacks or frustrations and all of those things to make us bitter, to make us frustrated, to make us throw in the towel, to make us do all of those things, yes, exactly. It can be extremely overwhelming and then you're not likely to pick it up. So exactly, Taisha, gentle observer, meaning that you're observing, but you're giving yourself grace. When you're doing something new, when you're doing something different, you are going to have moments where it doesn't go the way you want. And if you beat yourself up, that doesn't serve you far greater, right? That doesn't make you more successful. It actually impacts your success. So becoming that gentle observer allows you to give yourself the feedback that you need and grow from it. So the first step to making next year epic is become a gentle observer. What happened last year that did not go well? What did you learn from last year that did not go well? And how can you build upon that? How can you continue to grow from that? What lessons are there that you can take with you to be more informed as we move into the next year? There are a lot of us had setbacks in 2020, but a lot of us had wins. And the people that had those wins were because they let those setbacks become those stepping stones for their success. Okay. So becoming a gentle observer is first and foremost, so important. And really not even just with goal setting in every area of your life, that's a, a really important piece. That's a really important component is to become that gentle observer. How do I, how can I learn something new? How can I gently observe what I need to, how I need to grow? And when you allow yourself to gently, gently observe, um, you have the opportunity to continue to expand and to grow. Okay. So that's first and foremost. The second piece, I'm going to like sit up. Sorry. This is like, I'm sitting on a floor. And so I'm just going to steal a pillow and like sit all the way up. So excuse me. Okay. So the second piece is to get clear on what it is you want. All right. So this is where I see a lot of people make a mistake because when I'm talking to people about goal setting in general, they'll say things like, I want to lose weight. And then, you know, next week they've lost, thank you for the love. They have lost a pound. Technically, your subconscious mind has checked it off the list and been like, well, we helped you lose weight. We helped you go after what it is you wanted. But you have to be specific about what that looks like. Do you want to save money? If so, how much money do you want to save? Do you want to lose weight? If so, how much how much weight do you want to lose? Do you want to start a business? If so, what type of business? Like getting really clear on what it is that you want because when we're not clear, it makes it difficult to really create action steps that align with the outcome that we want, okay? So getting really, really clear on what you want. And uh, the third step that kind of weaves into step number two is going to be really important because, thank you so much, Taisha, when we set goals, we a lot of times are in this, in this frame of mind, like, I really want this thing, but in the back of our mind, we have led ourselves to believe that it's not available, okay? So it might be like, oh, I want to lose weight, but I tried to lose weight last year and I never lost the weight. Or I really, really want to write this book, but last year when I tried, I fell short, right? We beat ourselves up because of what happened before. And so there is this thing called expanders. And the way that expanders works is that like what you see in your immediate circumstances, what you see around you as far as people, what you have experienced yourself is what you will expand your goal and base your goals and your success around. So what I'd like to teach my clients to do is to extend their expanders, okay? Meaning that Ex extend what you see around you to know that there's more available, okay? And some of us do this and don't even realize that this is what we're doing. So some examples of this may be creating vision boards. So pulling out images that let you see what is available, okay? A key thing when you're doing vision boards that I think a lot of people miss is um, a lot of times they will not create vision boards. They will only create vision boards based on things. But I always say weave in emotions. What emotion do you want to feel as well? Like what emotion do you want to feel as you're creating this? Um, for me, I extend my expanders by the people that I'm surrounding myself with. You know, research says that you are an average of the top five people you spend the most amount of time with. Now, this is not some like random thing that they figured out. Thank you for the love, you guys. Um, this is real. So say, I'm, I'm gonna just have you do like a little test. Take the top five people you spend the most amount of time with and if they are kind enough to let you know, ask them how much money they make, okay? Take that, that number, multiply it by five and then divide it. Or not multiply it by five, add up all their things and then divide it by five. Your salary is very, very close to that, guaranteed. Take the top five people you spend the most amount of time with and ask them how many how many hours on average do they watch TV. Average that. That's about how much time you watch TV. 
you will become an average of the top five people you want to, you're around the most, okay? If you want to be something different, if you want to do something different, you have to extend your circle, meaning extending those expanders. This is not me at all telling you like, okay, no, you can't be friends with so-and-so or so-and-so. This is me telling you to start bringing new people into your circle. Like for me, when I hired my own coach, that extended my expanders because here I was, you know, having a business and I had like really small goals like, oh, maybe I'll do this. Maybe I'll do this. And when I'm seeing her killing it, I'm like, oh, that's available for me. And it held me to a different standard. So extend your expanders because then it lets you know what's available for you. I am a firm believer that if you have a desire deep in your heart, it is not an accident. It is not an accident. And a lot of times we try to invalidate that desire. Like, oh, well, only Oprah can do that. Or only so-and-so can do that. Or when my T's are crossed and my eyes are dotted, then I'll be able to do that. That's not the way that it works, okay? If you want to grow beyond that, you have to extend your expanders, allowing you to know what's available. Yes, Taisha, exactly. When you did that, it, changing your circle will change your results. It, it's amazing. So really extending those expanders is huge, is huge. Um, so again, using like a Pinterest board, creating a vision board, changing your immediate circle, um, finding and hiring somebody that you really enjoy um, and connect with, having that person in your circle. Because while I'm an amazing coach, I can only coach myself so far because I'm not going to push myself beyond where I'm comfortable. But hiring somebody to push me to a different level, to hold me to a different uh, point of accountability forces me to up level. OK, but in a great way. Then we move into step number four, which is to embody embody what it is that you want now as if you already have it okay the biggest mistake that people make is they're like when i have this amount of money then i will believe this when i you know write this book then i will believe this start to embody and live as if it has already happened really true to life story when i was writing my very first book i was telling myself i dr nicole am a best-selling author at that time, all I had was an idea. First off, I wasn't even a doctoral graduate yet. I just started my doctoral program. Second off, all I had was an idea. So I wasn't even an author. I don't even think I had anything written on a sheet of paper at that time. But the more I told myself that, the more I began to embody it and the more I began to act and align with it. So I would say, okay, what would a best-selling author behave like? What decision would a best-selling author make? How would a best-selling author make decisions today or wake up or um, act today or write today or whatever? And it informed my decisions. Here's the really cool thing about embodiment. Embodiment is almost like a bridge from your subconscious mind to your reality, okay? And the really, really interesting thing is that we are not, we have not been taught how to effectively use our subconscious mind. Our subconscious mind controls over 99% of our day-to-day -day actions, but we're using our conscious mind where we can rationalize things, where things can make sense where it feels normal. You got to get out of there and use your subconscious mind because your subconscious mind is much like a robot in the sense that like when you put it to task for you, it's going to go to task for you. It's going to figure out how it can bring certain things to fruition, okay? So one thing that I really, really like to do, and this is extreme, but I learned, I can't remember where I learned this. It's in some like personal development book, but I always use affirmations. I love affirmations, like all the things, but when I started using affirmations, I would say an affirmation every time I would walk through a door frame. Now, first off, you're gonna be like, okay, I walked through way too many door frames. This is crazy. Like, oh my goodness. But second off, what it let me do is it helped me to continue to reprogram my subconscious mind to align with the success that I wanted. Because the truth is, we have, ne we have thoughts all day, but majority, in fact, over 80% of them are negative. So what would happen if you shift, shifted those thoughts and believed positive things that allowed you to really step into what you're called to step into. Now, a lot of people like to call it faking it until you make it. Faking it till you make it to me is when you don't believe that it's available, okay? When you fake it till you make it, you're like, I'm gonna pretend that I'm an author even though I don't believe that I can really be one. No, that's not what I'm asking you to do. I'm asking you to know that your success is inevitable, that the outcome that you desire is actually available for you. The Bible says... I have come so that you can have life and life more abundantly. And he also says that I work all things together for the good of those who love me and are called according to my purpose. So everything, your setbacks, your failures, your mistakes, the good, the bad, the ugly, the beautiful, and everything in between is working together for your good. It's working in alignment for where you want to be. And if you operate from that place of knowing that, that's not a place of faking it till you make it. That's just you being in a position to receive exactly what is what is what is available for you, okay? 
Thank you so much. Yes, it's my, one of my favorite too, Taisha. Thank you, Chanel. I'll see you later, okay? Um, you can catch the uh, tail end later. Have a happy new year. So you're operating from that place and you're allowing yourself, you're giving yourself to embody exactly who you really are called to be. Instead of giving yourself all these excuses and falling victim to your limiting beliefs or all of those things and then feeling sorry for yourself and not being able to accomplish what it is that you want to accomplish, okay? So we have to stop waiting for all of our T's to be crossed and our I's to be dotted to embody it. Embody what it is and the outcome that you want today and start to operate from that place because when you start to operate from that place, you open up you open up expansive opportunities for things to flow to you, okay? When you operate from the place of like, yeah, this goal is available for me, then you'll notice new things will start coming to you, new expansive opportunities, intuitive downloads, like all of those things. And then finally, the fifth step is to take one aligned action step today. One aligned action step today, okay? I like to do this thing in the morning where I get really, really still and I like to check in to see like what what things are coming to my mind. And the reason that I do this, really interesting fact, is your brain is most vulnerable first thing in the morning, okay? And what most of us make the mistake of doing is we jump on and we check social media. We jump on and we check our email. We jump on and we check our missed calls and texts and all the things, right? And then we wonder why all day we're carrying this negative energy. Well, you got on social media and now you're comparing yourself to so-and-so who just um, went on a trip and you're sitting in your house and you're over it, right? Or you just checked your um, email, you realize your boss wants you to do this extensive project and you're like, dang, I even stepped foot out the bed and I'm already overwhelmed, right? That's the energy you carry with you out throughout, throughout the day. For me, I don't start my day like that because I do understand the subconscious mind. I do understand the power of it and how intuitive your subconscious mind is. And I don't think that enough of us tune into it regularly. So for me, what I do is I'm still, and I like to just check and see like what, what ideas are coming, what things are coming to mind. Sometimes I get really crazy, amazing ideas, and sometimes I don't, but just stilling my mind starts me off in the right energetic state. When, what I'm asking you to do for step number five is to take one aligned action step today, and I'm challenging you to take a moment and be still, okay? We, a lot of times, make the mistake of looking for the answer externally. We're like, so-and-so knows the answer, or so-and-so has this, or whatever, and we, we expect everybody else and everything else to have the answer. But the truth is, you have the answers deep inside of you. They are very deep in there, and they're very available for you. The problem is, we are rushing and doing all of these things, and juggling all these responsibilities, and wearing all these hats, and putting our attention in everything else instead of being still and getting in touch with ourselves. And that, if I can be very transparent with you, that was probably one of my favorite parts about this year, was that it forced us to slow down because I'm a very busy person. 90% of my work, you know, my ideal client is a busy woman. I work with busy women. I know busy inside and out. I joke and say overwhelmed and busy were my middle and last name. Like I say that all the time because it's become so normalized for us. But it forces us to slow down. This year, I feel like, to some extent, has forced us to slow down. So for me, I know I'm not alone. <laughs> um, for me, when you slow down, it helps you to make more intentional and aligned action. The mistake that I see a lot of people kind of falling into, the trap I see people falling into, is they set a goal and they're like, all right, I want to um, I wanna save money. And then they say, okay, this is the step I'm going to take to save money. And then they hold tight to this goal and they feel like this, these are the only steps they can take. And when they take those steps or they don't take those steps or they fail at those steps, then they just throw in that proverbial towel. When in reality, keep the goal here, but be willing to be flexible here to be able to get here. You may go here, you may go here, you may go here. You're still going to get there, but be willing to be flexible because what you don't know is that, like I said, your subconscious mind is always working in the background. And so you may have an idea that you don't even know is available yet, and then you take it and then it, project, it like propels your success. But if you're still trying to hold so tight, thank you so much, Brian. Thank you, thank you. You're welcome. If you're trying to hold so tight, to this one track mind to get here, you're not going to be able to get there the way that you desire to get there, okay? So what I challenge you to do is take an aligned action step, but that's going to require you to slow down. So thinking of these steps that we talked about, first becoming a gentle observer and identifying what it is that you learned this last year that you'd like to take in and be more informed with moving into the next year. Then getting crystal clear about what it is you want. No more vague goals about, oh, I want to save money because you might find a penny on the floor the next time you're walking around your block, right? Next time you're walking your dog. Well, now you made more money. That goal's checked off. Be really, be really, really specific and clear about what it is that you want. Extend your expanders. 
really creating um, the belief system, the mindset beliefs, instilling that in your life so that you know that this is actually available for you. And then embody that outcome like you already know it's coming, not waiting for some specific external factor to say, okay, now you have permission to be the person you want to be. No, agree that you have that permission. And then taking aligned action is going to be so important. But in order to take that aligned action, you got to do those first four steps and you got to get still and check in with yourself. What would that one aligned action step look like? For example, I had a one-on-one -on -one call with a client yesterday. She is really, really wanting to start coaching. She's like so pumped up. She's so excited. She like really wants to get her coaching business off the ground. So as we work through some of these strategies, we did a couple other mindset tools, but as we work through some of these um, strategies, when we got to the end, I asked her, what is your body telling you about the next best step? And immediately I heard her do this like grunting, like, uh, and it's like, you know it, it just feels difficult to say, or it feels scary. It's bringing about fear. It's bringing about anxiety. But here's what I'm going to tell you. As long as you hold tight to what's comfortable, as long as you hold tight to what's familiar, as long as you hold tight to what's relatable, as long as you hold tight to all those things and justify staying there, is as long as you'll stay in your comfort zone, which to us feels comfortable and feels safe. But I promise you, there's absolutely no growth available there. If you want next year to be better, if you want if you want something different, you got to do something different. It's not something that's just going to happen by, it's not just going to happen by happenstance. It's something you have to be diligent enough to be able to commit to. So when you sit still and you're like, what is one aligned action step I can take as I'm reflecting on these steps? And as you sit still with yourself and you ask yourself this question and you feel that pull towards something, do it, do it. Because this is, there's a quote by Martin Luther King that I love that says, Faith is taking the first step even when you don't see the whole staircase. And I always follow it up with when you take that first step, the next one will be illuminated step after step after step. You build upon that, okay? So you cannot, you absolutely cannot get to the outcome that you desire by holding on to where it is that you want to be. We have to remove and jump out of those comfort zones to get to where we want to be. And part of that is going to be committing to taking action, not when it's convenient, not when it's fun, not when it's easy, but today, okay? So as you're feeling this, check in with yourself. We are intuitive creatures. We, Like I said, we know the answers inside of us, but it's difficult. And so my client I was sharing with you about, she knew that she needed to go live. And for her, she's like, it's been something she's been avoiding forever. And guess what? She did it. And guess what? It wasn't as bad as she said it was. It wasn't as bad as she originally led herself to believe it was. And now this is something that she wants to build on. It's something she wants to grow into doing more frequently. But if she had just sat, sat there on that phone hemming and hawing, and then if she got off the phone with me and she made that excuse, and then she still never went live, and she, still, she would still be in the same place next year. Too many of us are in the same place year after year after year and calling that life. That is not a way to live. You are called to so much more. And so I wanted to come and share this today because I don't want anyone to have an excuse to be in their own way. We all have big dreams. We all have big visions. We all have big desires, hopes, and aspirations and things we want to accomplish. But it can't happen unless you're intentional about taking aligned action as it relates to the outcome that you desire. So here's what I'm going to say in closing. First and foremost, thank you for all who joined me live. Thank you for who are all joining on my replay. You guys are so freaking amazing. Um, I know that this is a really busy day. so the time that we all want to kind of be with family and there's really a lot going on, but I want to extend an opportunity to be able to connect with me. So as we are moving into the new year, um, one thing that I have decided to do, I'm sorry, this is getting all crooked because I wanted to do a copy and paste, but apparently this doesn't love me. Okay. So it's not going to work. So I'm going to have to manually step it in. So as we're moving into the new year, um, one thing that I have decided to do is I decided to open up my calendar. Okay. One thing that I'm extremely passionate about, I will come back and just type it in in a minute because this is going to distract me and I want to be focused. Okay. One thing that I'm extremely passionate about is helping women be able to bridge the gap from where they are to where they want to be. I don't want women li living stuck and stagnant and unfulfilled lives because that serves nobody. For you to play small, not only are you negatively impacting yourself, you're impacting the collective as well. There are people that are looking to you, even your spouse, your children, people in your circle. You never know how you doing what you're called to do could create, be a catalyst for change for somebody else. But when we're playing small and playing safe, that serves nobody. And so one thing that I have decided to do is open my calendar to extend an opportunity for you to be able to connect with me, okay? I'm opening my calendar for free 15-minute calls for those that are looking for support at making next year 
the best year yet. And the way in which that I would support you is I am opening the doors for an intensive program where I literally help you bridge the gap from where you are to where you want to be. And I use a lot of different strategies. I'm using mindset tools. I'm using neuro-linguistic programming to literally reprogram your mind for success. I'm using my propri propri <laughs> proprietary elevate method. Okay. This is a method to help you elevate your mind and elevate and up level your life. I am using human design, which has been so amazing. I recently got certified in it. I'm using energy techniques. I am using goal setting strategies, productivity hacks. I mean, we are, we are creating a container that forces you to step into the next level of who you know that you're called to be. If that feels aligned in your soul, you feel connected to it and you're like, oh my gosh, yep, this sounds like my name is written on it. You can use the link below, which I'm going to type in a moment. Um, I'm so sorry that my hand is on the screen on, uh, on Facebook. Sorry. What I'm going to do is I'm going to type this in there. And um, it's calendly.com forward slash Nicolia Williams. So I typed it in Instagram and then Facebook, I'll come back in and do it. Hey, Tasha. Um, I'm going to come back in and uh, type it in. But if you use that link and um, go to Calendly, you'll schedule a free 15 minute call with me and it'll be a strategy call. It'll help us to be able to determine if you're a good fit to really being able to say yes to what it is that you know you're called to and being able to step out of your own way and to be able to step into the expansive and limitless version of what next year could bring for you. Okay. If you know someone that can be blessed by this, share this video. Sharing is caring. I can't say that enough. So make sure you share. Um, outside of that, I'm just sending you guys all so much love. Mwah, mwah. And um, just want to say Happy New Year. And yeah, I'll check in and chat with everyone later. And Instagram, hold tight. Let me, sorry. Bye, Facebook. <laughs> or no, Instagram, you're good. Bye, Instagram. I'll see you guys later. Happy New Year. Sending so much love. Mwah, mwah. Sorry about the back and forth screen. And I'll check in and chat with you all later. And then Facebook, hold tight. What I'm going to do is I am going to come and type it in. Yes, Happy New Year to you. I'm going to type it in here. I literally thought I copied and pasted it, but I did not. So I thank you all for your so kind patience with this. And I'm typing in the link in the or below. I'll say below. All right. There it is. It's sent. So we're good to go. So happy new year. We are going to make this an absolutely amazing and the most epic year yet. And I'm so honored and excited that you guys are here and that you joined me today. And I will check in and chat with everyone later. <laughs> Bye guys.